Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario, and happy Tuesday for that matter, November 7th, 2023. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your afternoon and joining me for this latest Weather Center segment, which I'll admit right out of the gate is going to be a little different. This morning before clocking in for work after my morning workout, I wanted to go ahead and revisit some old hurricane coverage from previous seasons since we are getting ready to close out hurricane season 2023, and let me tell you guys, even though these were past events for not only the Gulf Coast, for Florida, the mid-Atlantic states, out there in the Caribbean, even in the Eastern Pacific, there were a lot of moments where I just felt the anxiety and the stress, and as if I needed to jump on here and start providing coverage, that's how intense some of the coverage that there was on multiple media sources out there associated with a lot of the past hurricanes that swept through, especially the major ones. So today, guys, I want to take a little bit more time than typical to go ahead and do a little foreshadowing. We're going to look at the possibility of seeing a very, very intense 2024 hurricane season. So stick with me till the end. We have a lot of information I want to cover and a lot of the trends I'm seeing that could possibly suggest we dodged a lot of bullets this year and next year we may actually see more of an open season type setup. But first things first, we got to go ahead with a regular update. As typically scheduled, you can see we're looking at our half-disc water vapor shot, one of my favorite satellite loops of all time. And you can see we have a fairly active meridional pattern across North America, but very low amplitude. You can see a lot of our major large-scale weather players are floating across the northern tier states, kind of running parallel to the border of the United States and Canada, like so in that ink fashion I drew out there. You can also see we have a newly formed up system out there off the east coast that was once positioned positioned off the southeastern coastline, now trucking further and further into the central Atlantic, supported by a little bit of remnants of our polar front jet to its north, and definitely being fed into by our subtropical jet down off to the south. It also looks like we've seen a very, very beneficial trend in terms of the amounts of dry air we have out there over the Caribbean, allowing a large majority of our thunderstorm activity to finally fall off. We had tremendous amounts of rainfall and thunderstorm activity for much of Central America over the last several days since the end of last week for that matter, and a lot of it has since tapered off. Unfortunately, it looks like we are seeing a little bit of daytime convection, the instability and leftover moisture down in there, coupled with the sun heating up the surface of the earth, kind of resulting in that convection we're seeing moving in. It's kind of like a trademark sea breeze front, if you will, seeing a lot of that thunderstorm activity forming along the coast and then punching further inland over parts of Honduras, Nicaragua, moving into Guatemala and Belize. All in all, though, we're pretty quiet out there. We are still watching for a very low threat potential for some tropical cyclone development in our deep Southern Caribbean. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. And a new, possibly very potent baroclinic system that might be impacting Bermuda around the 13th of November. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. All right, so here we go. We have the GFS on the left, the Euro on the right-hand side. And as you track both of these models through these RR12Z iterations, you can see right at about the 12th into the 13th, we see a little bit of very familiar cyclogenesis or low pressure formation taking place off the southeastern coastline, just around the northern periphery of Florida, off the coast of South Carolina and Georgia is where we have a new low pressure center starting to develop. And as this does so, we have a very strong shortwave trough at 500 millibars helping to rapidly deepen this thing down as it continues to move further into the Atlantic, impacting Bermuda almost head on according to the GFS. The latest iteration of the Euro has it traveling just a little bit further to the south, but nonetheless, it looks like you guys are definitely in for some rain and wind with this, as well as some potential frontal passage and some cold air coming in from the north. You can't see it on these two charts here, but I've been looking at other mean sea level pressure and thickness charts, and you could see quite a bit of cold air advection or movement of cold air to the north that's likely to pass right over top our Bermuda Island and help provide them with some relief immediately after following an impact from this baroclinic low. Nothing too dramatic. We're not looking at anything subtropical. This is directly influenced by our polar front jet and the subtropical jet for that matter. And if you look out over the mid-Atlantic states and up into the northeast Great Lakes, we do have a very strong polar high that's working across the northern tier. United States helping to support that cold air that's going to be wrapping up behind the cold frontal boundary as this begins to take shape. So Bermuda, no cause for concern, just looking like a very active weather pattern between the days of 12th and the 14th of November as this system can work its way through and then immediately following that you can see high pressure is going to take over, planting itself almost directly overhead and you're in for some really good weather shortly thereafter. All right, now down to the Caribbean. We have the GFS on the right hand side this time and the Euro on the left. Both models looking very interesting 
interesting. Unfortunately, the GFS is still doing its GFS stuff, showing a hurricane forming down there in the Southern Caribbean. But the reason I want to bring that up is because it looks like later into the run of the 12Z Euro, we actually do see a little bit of cyclogenesis and low pressure formation. I'm very quickly tracking this through to the very tail end of the run. You can see on the GFS, we already have a very potent hurricane indicated right off the coast of Central America. Not really thinking that's going to be our end result here. Too much wind shear, too many different dynamics that would help to smother any attempt at becoming a full-fledged strong tropical cyclone. But if you look there at 240 hours out, we do have an area of low pressure out there on the Euro, down in that same general source region that we've been hinting at over the last several days now. A lot of folks still want to push for a hurricane. I think that likelihood is nil to none. Could we see a disturbance out there or some kind of a tropical low pressure begin to form? Absolutely, but I think the wind shear is going to cap it off in a very weak and disorganized state. But again, time will tell. We'll have to see exactly how our upper air pattern especially fluctuates and if we can get a little bit more of an opportune window for that wind shear to stay away and see if we can maybe get another system out going over there. Taking a quick glance as well at our Canadian model, and you can see the same sentiments echoed on this model as well. We're also looking for a widespread precipitation event for the southeast and along the Gulf Coast, which is good for a lot of us who have been battling the drought setup for quite a long period of time now from the summer season all the way into fall and still ongoing as we sit bone dry out there for much of the Gulf Coast and the western coastline of Florida, now etching into the Florida Peninsula for that matter. It's been very dry out here where we live as a matter of fact. So it goes without saying we need some rain and it looks like the Canadian model is anticipating a lot of that tropical return flow around our polar high over the mid-Atlantic states to finally create that strong enough interaction to feed some good moisture content and good instability up there and provide us with a good shot at seeing widespread rainfall. And then if you look down in the Southern Caribbean, we're also seeing a weak low pressure center beginning to form up. So it's anybody's guess exactly what's going to take shape down there. I'll very quickly go over to our wind shear model and you can see really strong wind shear down through there. So I don't anticipate anything that does get going is going to be very strong or organized, but it goes without saying we are still in hurricane season. So it's definitely worth monitoring and we're going to do so here in the weather center. This is where it does get a little bit more interesting. Our ensembles have not let go of the possibility of seeing a tropical cyclone down over there. You have the Euro ensembles on the left and the GFS on the right. And you can see even though the GFS begins to fire off lots of agreement initially, the Euro does begin to pick up on this as well, kind of going off in the same general fashion being steered out to sea predominantly by our next upcoming frontal system as they just continue to propagate across the central United States down into the south and then across the Gulf of Mexico providing that force field from if anything does get going from making landfall in the state of Florida or working its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Some of the European ensemble members definitely do think we could see something try to sneak its way in between that force field or in between it turning on and off figuratively or metaphorically speaking and the GFS also does have a couple members doing the same thing so once again guys because we do have favorable agreement on a lot of our ensemble members to include the Canadian ensembles I'm not going to show them this time around because you kind of get the big picture here we are going to keep an eye out because it does look like we're going to have a lot of good moisture down there the wind shear might be a bit of a problem but then of course naturally we've been saying it all hurricane season the waters are still hot and they haven't cooled very much at all and then last but not least, we have our probabilities here with the Euro. I'm not too sure why 264 and 288 hours are the only panels populated at this point for our 12Z data, but this is remarkable to see. You can see even into 288 hours, we're seeing widespread agreement for tropical depression formation, and especially here at 264. This is the highest we've been in a while on the Euro model. Now, granted, we did see them higher than this when we were talking about the likes of Invest 97L, and we all know how that turned out. But still, nonetheless, it's very interesting to see our incremental increases down there across the Caribbean favoring a direction that would put the likes of Jamaica, parts of Haiti, Dominican Republic, and the eastern tip of Cuba under the gun for seeing maybe a tropical disturbance or even a full-grown tropical depression headed your way sometime around mid to late November. So definitely keeping an eye on this. Still a source region that's under investigation consistently here. And I'd be lying to you guys if I told you, even though I have my doubts as to whether we'll get our next name system down there, I'm I'm still watching all the model updates and I'm keeping a close eye on not only our analysis data but also satellite imagery looking at our moisture content down there and seeing exactly what our shear does because if we do see a small opening for a tropical cyclone to form up you best believe it'll probably take full advantage so we're going to keep you safe down there and I'll definitely keep you updated as we go day to day.
All right, so if you've stuck around to this point, this is what I want to get into because truthfully, guys, after watching all that recurring coverage of hurricane seasons in the past, I'll tell you the truth, and maybe I shouldn't be making a video like this, but it definitely struck me emotionally, especially broadcasting as much as I did for our Lesser Antilles and folks during Idalia and other locations such as the Northeast when they were impacted by Lee earlier this hurricane season. It goes without saying, even though we did have some catastrophic moments and some close calls this hurricane season, we did dodge a lot of bullets, and that's mainly because we had two distinct source regions turned off. We didn't see a whole lot of action in the Gulf of Mexico, and we definitely didn't see a whole lot of development whatsoever from start to finish, for that matter, in the Caribbean. Could that be changing here soon? Looking at the ensembles and the probabilities, maybe, but throughout most of the hurricane season, guys, it goes without saying the Caribbean has been quiet. Now, we're looking at our CFS climate forecasting system model to look at exactly what our El Nino begins to do as we roll into the next hurricane season. You take this through through time very slowly and you can see a predominant El Nino out there for much of our winter time. We're now approaching spring. This is valid for April 2024 and then take a look at what those Pacific temperatures do as you get into May and then June and then July, and then finally August, guys. Look at how we are markedly cooler out there in the East and Central Pacific, which is indications of that neutral, if not potential, La Nina phase, just in time as the Atlantic hurricane season starts to reach its peak. First and foremost, that already concerns me because what that tells me is our Gulf of Mexico and our Caribbean are gonna be source regions that will become uncapped. It'll be open season, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Now, hold that thought. We're gonna get into what the future looks like, but I want to take you back in time using our CANSEPS climatology model. This is going to be looking at our accumulated precipitation anomaly. So essentially where we're likely to see most of our thunderstorm, rainfall, and potential tropical activity as we go month to month. We have it rewound currently. I want to show you just how well this verified for this hurricane season in particular. If you look, this is at the beginning of our hurricane season, or I should say a month before that, May 2023. And you get a very good picture that our MDR is going to get active. We have a lot of reflected precipitation values down there just to the south of where our main development region typically ignites. And you can see already, as of May 2023, our Caribbean was shut down. Very dry, very heavily sheared, not a whole lot of activity expected. You take this through into June, makes sense. July, August, and then September. And you can see, even though we did have our increases in our main development region traffic, if you look at a large majority of the precip values, it kind of echoes what we saw most of our storms do in this hurricane season. Taking a close aim for the Lesser Antilles before boomeranging out, missing Bermuda for the most part. We saw some close calls out there as well. But then take a look at how the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean are still capped. There's nothing likely to take place down there. Now let me show you for next year. All right. So this is valid for December 2023, and this very well ebbs and flows with what we have going on down there. This is representative of our El Nino type of winter, where we can expect increased precip chances and rainfall threats for the Gulf Coast and the Southeast. To be determined, of course, we haven't seen a whole lot of that as of yet, but this is for December, guys, so we got to give it at least another 30 days to verify. And then notice that the Caribbean is ablaze with a lot of the rainfall and thunderstorm activity we've been realizing for the last month now. As you track this through time, notice the difference. So as we go through January and February, very typical of an El Nino. Look at all the rainfall we're expecting for the southeast and even the mid-Atlantic states. The tropics are shut down. Then we go into March, April, and then May, guys. Look at the difference here. We have drier conditions expected as our El Nino setup begins to shut down and we wander into that neutral phase. We could possibly see hurricane season try to get started early if we rotate into a neutral, if not an early La Nina oscillation as we get into June. Take a look at how we're expecting very, very increased levels of rainfall down there over the Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles spreading further into the Caribbean. And then check this out. You go into July, August, and look at how everything is wide open. And the main reason I'm emphasizing this, guys, is not necessarily that we're going to see hurricanes track in a different direction. We're going to see strong hurricanes or anything along those lines. I'm talking source region. So if you go ahead and copy and paste the general trend we saw with a lot of our hurricanes this year, you start them out off the Cabo Verdes, coming off of Africa, and track them up like this, very reminiscent of what we saw all hurricane season. If we simply change the source region, we copy and paste that X into the Caribbean, and do the exact same thing, draw a line like so, 
Take a look at how it's like bowling pins at that point. You form things in the Caribbean and somebody's going to get knocked over. And that's kind of the big picture I'm looking at here, guys. I'm not trying to hype up a hurricane season that's still all about seven to eight months away. But because I'm seeing the trend in our El Nino to La Nina oscillation, coupled with how hot the temperatures were this year in terms of the Caribbean, the open Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico, if we uncap and we open the gates for the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico to start brewing our storms that we typically see not only during the early early portions of hurricane season, but right about now, as a matter of fact, October into November, there could be a totally different scenario we're looking at. And guys, again, this is maybe a little emotionally charged after what I saw, a lot of the coverage and a lot of the footage of lives being taken, folks calling into weather centers, calling into news stations as their homes are flooding. They're already into second story buildings on the verge of potentially drowning. And I just want to let you guys know that this is definitely on my radar, despite being so far out into the future. We still have to work our way through winter and spring, but you can definitely guarantee that Weather Center Nazario especially is going to be monitoring what happens in the tropics, even if we are well outside of hurricane season, because it goes without saying, we definitely got lucky. A lot of us did, some of us didn't this hurricane season, and that could definitely be flipped upside down as we begin hurricane season 2024. Real quick, before we start wrapping up the video, guys, we're just going to look at our CANSIPS precipitation anomaly, and as you track this through, we're looking at the same exact trends. Wet down here in the southeast during our El Nino winter, drying up across the tropics, and then as you get into spring, and then May, again, open Caribbean, MDR already starting to get active. June, hurricane season begins. July, and then August, look at how it's an open channel across the main development region through the Lesser Antilles, the Caribbean, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm noticing that our Gulf Coast, and especially the state of Florida has been under a lot more green than we were throughout this hurricane season. You see it into September as well, and then even in October. Look at how active the Caribbean could possibly be for next year, guys. So it goes without saying this is going to be on my radar very, very long term, and I'm going to be studying this every week, every month that I can, looking at what our El Nino is doing if it starts to weaken down a little bit sooner than expected, which means La Nina could progressively come in sooner and get that much stronger. There's a lot of variables on the table. And again, forgive me if this is a little too emotionally charged, a little too hype-ish for a hurricane season that hasn't come close to starting, let alone we haven't wrapped up 2023. But again, the climatology models verified really well this hurricane season. They definitely verified well in terms of just these precipitation anomalies and our temperature anomalies for that matter. So looking ahead and just thinking about how we could change our source regions entirely and open up new regions for tropical development. And again, if you take the same tracks we saw this year. You take the storms that were forming out out in the greater Atlantic area and you put them into the Caribbean and track them north. Unfortunately, they're never going to be a fish storm. You just have too many people in their way. Alrighty guys, we're going to wrap up this extended segment of Weather Center Nazaria. If you've stuck around to the end of this video, I applaud you and I thank you so much for hearing me out and hearing the sentiments I had to echo after watching a lot of the continuing coverage of major hurricane systems plowing into the Caribbean and into the greater United States. We'll talk a little bit more about this as we finish up our tropics talk and then we begin to roll into what I would like to call, which was an idea from you guys, and I thank you graciously for this, our post-tropics topics as we continue our live streams through the winter and the springtime seasons. But again, thank you for taking some time out of your Tuesday afternoon to join me today, guys. We'll talk to you again very soon. Please, if you have any questions about what's going on out there for the winter time or what next hurricane season could look like for your area, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Or if you have any other suggestions for upcoming content creation as we go out of hurricane season into the winter and the spring, please feel free to let me know at any time. But until next time, guys, we'll see you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.